So how long did it take them to know for sure that Kaylin was right? Months. Terrible months. It took the hubs longer and longer to send messages to and from Orio Garden, with no explanation as to why. But there were so many people back then. Why couldn't they fix the problem? Harry often asked me the same question. I tried my best to answer, but he only seemed to process it when it came from Commander Kaylin. And she tended to have better information than what the company gave me, anyway. The transceivals have been misfolding proteins for decades, and those proteins have worked their way into people's brains and replicated themselves throughout the food chain. Any living thing can carry them, and anything with a brain can make more. But how could they get so far without anyone noticing? They're very small, they aren't immediately harmful to humans, and they take even longer to hurt most animals. Although, apparently, the first symptomatic victims were dolphins, but nobody made the connection until people started dying. But with all the technology they have back there, and all the time people spend interacting with it, there must have been a way to catch this earlier. There were a lot of ways, but no one thought to try. They should have. Maybe they should have. But when we're confronted with something new, we sometimes can't apply even the most basic logic to it. True. Like one of our simulations, when they come up against something they weren't programmed for. Yeah, exactly. When I first heard about this, you, you saw, I couldn't even function. But now I'm able to have this conversation with you. And right now, while we're having it, the people back home are learning and adapting. Earth's not home anymore. I can't call a place home that I left on purpose and won't let me come back. You're saying that because you're angry. But we need Earth. We need other people. Don't give up on them, Harry. I love you, but the two of us can't live just to love each other. You sound like Janik. I... You don't know how Kaylin would react to that. No. This is exactly how Kaylin would react to that. Okay. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just trying to cut my emotional losses. How many people on Earth have the misfolded proteins? As far as they can tell, they all have it. Everyone? Not everyone is showing symptoms. And some of them might take years to die if they ate nothing but purified food. But it's everyone. And they haven't even found a good way to purify the food. And the hubs? It's even worse on the hubs. They've had the most exposure to both kinds of transceivals. They may be running into personnel problems soon. And us? Out here? Since we mostly send energy and only get a little back, we'd be relatively safe. Except that there's a substantial chance that we had it when we arrived. How do we tell? Only two stations have the gear to test their commanders. One tested positive, one negative. Jesus. So if you're right, and they won't be bringing us back, we could be dead even if they do come up with a cure. That's true. Unless the cure is something we can recreate ourselves. God. What? I just realized. If everyone at the hub dies, the automated system stops running, you and I will be cut off from each other. Strange that with all of the how do we adapt to your extended tour directives we've been getting, they never mention what to do if the hub goes down. Could you come up with a way for us to make contact directly? With Ko's help, I think so. Ko, do we know enough about Orion Garden's orbit to pinpoint them? The company database includes the planned orbit in detail, and I can check our previous communications for any changes. Good. I'm not really sure how we'll do it, but that's a start. Hopefully you have the same data about Pegaflare. I'll have to check with Ko when I get back, but I'm not sure I have all the know-how to make it happen. Oh, that's assuming I even make it back. What do you mean? Well, there are those unexplained delays we've been having with our file exchanges. Yeah, but that's understandable under the circumstances. I'm a little surprised they haven't lost any. Maybe those circumstances are getting to the people in charge, and they're tapping our communications, making sure we're not planning anything that's against orders. For instance, the stuff we've been talking about. Ko, would they be able to tamper with these simulation files? Grant's data structures are too dynamic and complex for a hub computer to alter them without us noticing. But if they focused considerable processing power on breaking the encryption and extracting the audio, yes. They could do it, given time. But what are they afraid of? They're afraid of us, out here. Out here is where the misfolds came from. They want to keep everything out here away, and they know that our natural reaction will be to come back. I assume they've taken steps to prevent that. They have. 
Some of our fellow commanders got in their capsules and tried to transceive themselves back. The hubs redirected their tachyons out into the universe. Oh, God. Pause playback. You never mentioned that at school. You weren't old enough. And they killed those people. People they'd sent out who just wanted to come home again? Those people coming home might have killed a lot of others. I don't want to watch this part. My plan for today was to show only the early days, their first interactions. But it's all one story. If you never watch this part, you'll never understand the rest. But if you want to stop for now... No. You're right. I need to see it. See that it all meant something. Whenever you're ready. Resume playback. How do you always know this stuff? There's a value to keeping in touch with people sometimes. But even if they can stop us from going back to the hubs... They couldn't stop us from trying to go to each other. But that's... doing that. To new coordinates and and using an improvised beacon? The math gets out of control. Co? No living being could survive being transceived under such conditions. However, an energy information transfer, which would be less complex and could be repeated until successful, should be possible given the application of sufficient effort, power, and ingenuity. Sounds like a weekend in the garage for Harry. Something like that. Uh, Now that I know they might be listening in, I feel a little less inclined to go into details. Want to talk about something else? No. I don't think either of us would be able to concentrate. At some point, this will become the new normal, but right now I want to inventory my seed bank for the exotic stuff they might use to make a treatment. And I can tell you already have half your mind on site-to-site transceivals. Yeah, but... I hate to say this, but... Kaylin's already back there, probably checking her seeds right now. You being here doesn't slow that down. Yes, but if I'm thinking that way, then I'm not believing I'm real. And if I'm believing that I'm real, I want to go check my seeds. Quite a catch, that catch-22. Okay, until next time. Love. Until next time. Next time would not be for a long while. Harry. I'm here. I need your help. With what? It's been 46 days since our last communication from Pegaflare, and 28 since we last heard anything from the hub. That explains why I haven't been updated since we last talked. Right. 75 days ago, Harry sent off the recording where we talked about making direct contact with each other. It took 29 days to get here. Since then, nothing. And what was the hub saying before they went silent? To stand by, mostly. Follow procedure. Don't deviate. Sometimes there'd be special instructions, but a lot of the words were scrambled up. I think the misfolds were giving some kind of aphasia to whoever was running the transmitter. Probably wouldn't be words at all, except that the computers were trying to auto-correct it. So we need to bypass the hub. You need to bypass the hub. You have the skills. I'm sorry, Commander, but I don't. I'm built to simulate Harry as a social being, not as an engineer. There's no part of Harry that's not an engineer. You got his tech talk down faster than any other part of him. Well, maybe that was the easiest part for the computer to understand. But whatever I know, your co knows more. Co knows a lot, but she tells me there are many ways to go about what Harry's trying to do. And they all rely on me knowing which one he's trying. He probably sent us a message setting the protocols, and he's out there alone, not knowing the hub didn't deliver it. Well, I guess we have to assume that it turned out there was no easy way to begin. If he could have just sent some tachyons your way, like a pebble against your window, he he would have done it. That's true. And I've been using most of my power sending tachyons his way on different frequencies. I'm listening for a response, but I get nothing. I, I think Harry would have tried the same thing. So it must not be feasible. So, what would he do next? I I don't know, Commander. I've never simulated him working on a problem like this. It's all guesswork, and you're only listening to me because I look like Harry. This can only mislead you into errors. You should deactivate me and work on the problem with your co. No! You've spent a lot of time observing Harry. If his first solution doesn't work, and the logical alternative doesn't work, what does he do? He would follow a hunch. He has a knack, an instinct for what might break or might work, but I don't have that. There must be some way he leans, some direction he tends to go. 
If there is, then he kept it to himself. He kept most things to himself until he met you. You've changed him a lot. For the better. Listen, I've spent a lot of time trying to draw out romantic Harry, but that's not the Harry I need right now. There is only one Harry. He loves you, and he fixes things, and he jokes with Ko, and it all comes from the same place. But I don't have that place. I just have the outward appearance of it. Well, if you really want to be deactivated, you better keep thinking. Because if you're the only Harry I've got, you'll be working overtime. Wait. What? You said it all comes from the same place. In that last exchange, my simulation told him that the Earth was still our home. How seriously would he take that? Coming from you? Very seriously. And if the hub stopped relaying our messages and attempts to reach us directly failed... He would try to contact you through Earth. Yes! Earth might not have anything to say to us, but maybe they'd let us talk to each other. Ko! Yes, yes ma'am? Get ready to send out that homing signal again, but this time directed to Transceiver Beacon 1 in the Soul System. Right away, ma'am. God, I'm an idiot. You were just faced with a problem you'd never had before. <laughs> You're sweet. Still want to be deactivated? And not if I can help. And it worked? She had to try multiple frequencies before she was able to make contact. And then it took several exchanges to work out the protocols. But they had a new file by the end of the week. Actually, a pack of files in numbered order. Harry? Hello, Kaylin. Grant? Where's Harry? The next two files are Harry updates. One is a simulation recording, which he tried to send some time ago, but was never delivered. And the other is a more recent update. Okay, well, it's great to see that you're all right, but why was your file the first in the set? I wanted to bring you up to speed on events on Earth. I'm working on methods to pull all three of us into the same simulation, but haven't perfected one yet. Plus, I thought the two of you would want to have your reunion alone. That's very thoughtful, but what's going on back home? The entire hub network is dead. As you may have deduced, they had the misfold worse than anyone, and it hit them right in the brains they needed to fight the problem. They fell behind the curve and never came back. And as far as I can tell, they either wrecked their computers or the computers wrecked themselves trying to follow contradictory orders. Have you reached any of the other stations? Not yet. Though from records the hubs gave me, it seems like some of the few remaining healthy commanders were going to kill themselves rather than face eternity alone. Oh, God. How do you know this? Hub wasn't telling me anything. They wanted my expertise on astronaut psychology, and I told them I could only give it if I had all the facts. So they CC'd me on all station hub communications. I don't recommend it for late night reading. And now you're in contact with Earth. When I realized the hub crews were a lost cause, I managed to nudge the automated system into relaying one last message to Earth, saying I'd be listening for something from them, and on what frequency. Eventually they contacted me. You, but not us. I think they used the collapse of the network as a convenient excuse to forget that the rest of you existed. But they talked to you. After a while, yes. It was nerve-wracking waiting for that reply knowing that the longer they waited, the fewer people would be mentally capable of making the decision to call me. But I had faith that they'd want my expertise again, and that faith was rewarded. Not your expertise in astronaut psychology, I take it, given that they'd written us off. Correct. It was my expertise in simulating human responses. You see, they realized that they're not going to find a cure and they wasted a lot of resources pursuing the old scan brains into computers thing. And as usual, only managed to give the subjects horrifying deaths in order to create some dangerously insane AIs. But someone remembered my work, so they dug up my last message and gave me a call. So your simulations are going to replace humanity. We'll have a planet full of machines pretending to be people? Perhaps that's all we ever had. But it's nothing quite so melancholy, really. My simulations were never meant to exist for themselves. They exist only to have an effect on people. What effect can they have? Run a planet-wide hospice as humanity dies out? Not a terrible idea under the circumstances. But it's better than that. You should switch to the next file and let Harry tell you. 
Co, switch to next file. Be seeing you. Switching. Harry. Uh, hey, Kay. What's wrong? I'm integrating your experience with my simulation since the last exchange. You really put him through his paces. I had a job that needed doing. Well, I'm glad he... I could help. Now we've got a bigger job. Yeah, Grant was cagey about that. What is it? The scientists on Earth, the few still able to think straight, they've made a breakthrough. Grant said they'd given up on finding a cure. That's true. But they have found out how to find and destroy the folded proteins. I've attached the details. I'm sure you'll understand the biology of it better than I can. But the process can't be done on a living brain. It, it would kill the subject. Sounds interesting, but it's not exactly a breakthrough. I mean, at least they'll be able to purify food now. Have they found a way to keep the misfolds from replicating themselves? No. So, the sick people will keep getting sicker, just not as fast. And everyone's sick already. I'm still not seeing the breakthrough. Give yourself a minute. Take a breath. Think of the big picture. <sighs> they can purify food. Uh, they could purify organs for transplantation. They could purify cells. They could... Embryos. You've got it. They can grow new people. They can make healthy babies. That's right. But it's too dangerous. The misfold is in the wild. Everything's a carrier. There'd be no way to keep the babies safe unless they lived in bubbles. Or one big bubble. A space station. They've repurposed one of the L5 colonies. Scrubbed it clean. Built robots to take care of all the next generation's needs. Except one. Parents? Exactly. They'll have their own codes to run the automated systems, and they even want to make copies of ours to take advantage of how they've evolved. But the codes can't give them everything they need. That's where grant simulations come in. As the kids grow up, they'll be able to enter the simulators and interact with things that act just like people. Things which, as you and I know, can express love. Mm, that they can. Tina, are you in the simulator? Stop, playback. Over here, Uncle Grant. Ah, so I see. Hello, Co. And what are we doing here? Co was telling me about Mom and Dad. Ah, yes, the grand romance. How far have you gotten? They were having their first conversation about how they fit into your plan. Aha. Uh -huh. And none of us knew yet just how important they would be. My simulations were never very good in new situations, and none of them had raised a child before. Why didn't you make simulations of our real parents? Most of your real parents were already dead. I did try to create simulations of living Earth humans, but they all dropped out of the program. The process of experiencing themselves trying to function with the growing brain damage was too painful to their self-image. So we decided the primary cares would be the simulations I already had in my archive. So that's why all the aunts and uncles are astronauts, like Mom and Dad. Correct. And I'm grateful to you guys for all you've done for us, but none of you are like Mom and Dad. No. Harry and Kaylin are unique. They were the only ones who stuck it out, who could stand being alone for so many years with no prospect of escape. So their simulations are the only ones that are still getting updated by the real people. Even for me, it was too much. My co tells me that one day I put everything on automatic and just walked out the hatch. And he let you? I was the commander. Why would you do that? Obviously, I can't say for certain. It might be that even though I didn't want to be around people, I couldn't stand the idea of a universe with so few adults to communicate with. I've never been very good at talking to children. True. But I like to think that even as I did it, I knew that Kaylin and Harry wouldn't let go until they'd given you children everything you needed. I wasn't required any more. And truth to tell, I think towards the end even I needed to get out of the four walls of that damned station. Maybe I just wanted to take a walk outside. Yet Kaylin and Harry are still living between those walls. As I say, they're unique. I used to pretend that they were my real mom and dad, that the other kids were made in the lab, but K 
Kaylin and Harry had left their cells behind, and I was the one embryo made out of those cells. Everyone likes to think they're exceptional. Actually, the three of us talked about that very subject, figuring out a way to synthesize Harry and Kaylin's DNA remotely and combine it so that one child would be truly theirs. But Kaylin didn't want to introduce any genetic tampering into the purified environment. And Harry didn't think any of you should be more special than the others. Harry said that? That surprises you? Harry knows more about human nature than you'd expect. I can't imagine he could live with Co all these years without picking up some of the things Co's observed. Harry has demonstrated a capacity to learn. When Harry's with me, when he's not teaching me stuff, he's always telling stories. But never anything detailed about him and Mom. If I ask about her, he just looks off and acts really happy or really sad, and he can't seem to tell the story right. So I ask Ko to show it to me. Ko would know. By the way, I never mentioned why I came looking for you. We've just received a transceival from Pegaflair. The Harry Simulation just finished updating himself and asked to speak with you. Be seeing you, Tina. Ko. Goodbye, Uncle Grant. Should I bring the Harry Simulation in here? Go ahead. Tina, I was hoping I'd see you first. You've always been my favorite. Ko says you don't play favorites. For a machine programmed for honesty, Ko is a dirty liar. I'll leave you two alone. Thank you for everything, Ko. The happy parts and the sad parts. I hope they helped you. If Ko's a dirty liar, I may have just wasted my whole day. Why is that? I made him promise to tell me about you and Mom. And he finally did. Yeah, he warned me he might do that. And you said it was okay? I wouldn't deny Ko a chance to do something new. He's always trying to grow. Yeah, seems like he is. So, tell me about Ko's story. Well, it started like this. Out in space, there was a man alone. And then, gradually, he wasn't. You've been listening to Companions, a play written and directed by Bob J. Kester. The role of Harry was played by Frank Wright. Stacy Tappan played Kaylin. Wesley James was Co. Joseph Page played Grant. Amelia Finefrock played Tina. And Courtney Abbott played Kaylin's Co. and the company announcer. Companions was recorded by Stephen Moore. Lisa Cohen and Claire Hain assisted in development and production. The music includes the compositions Prometheus, Tory Tone, and Tory Tone 2 by Mr. Vapor. They and other works by him can be found on SoundCloud. Special effects were from the freesound.org collection. Companions was written for the Coffee and Whiskey Productions Script Pub in Chicago, and Coffee and Whiskey's staff, actors, and audience were vital to its development. Other development assistance was provided by Scott Coyne, Tim Corbett, Rachel Kruger, Don Alsafi, Tasha Robinson, River Hardrick, and G Mark Comics. This production was made possible by our Kickstarter backers, with special thanks to J.M. Somerville for sponsoring the artwork, Jennifer Loopy Smith for sponsoring the character of Kaylin, and also Keith Phipps, Lisa Martinsick, Susan Kester, and Jacob Smith. The companion's cover image is Initio by X Elf Repusla X. Other works by the artist can be found on DeviantArt. Companions was recorded at Delmark Records Riverside Studio in Chicago, Illinois. For more information, including a complete list of Kickstarter backers and of the sound effects used, check out our website at hamletseries.com slash playcompanions. Companions is copyright 2016 by Bob J. Kester, all rights reserved. This is Bob J. Kester. I hope you enjoyed the play.